Russell Latupe. Latters as a national population will know you, mm -hmm. uh, former national footballer and now coach. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us this afternoon. Thank you for Out having me. Out of your me. busy shadow, quite clearly I'm seeing you. <laughs> I got you in the middle of the element. Yeah. All right. Uh, we are we are preparing for a tournament, so uh, even on a Sunday we need to be out here to get the work done. Commitment. Absolutely. Are we talking about commitment? Uh, it would be remiss of me to not mention that you are actually bilingual. You were committed to learning another language. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now a lot of people do not know that. Tell mm -hmm. us the story. Yeah. Well. Um, Basically, uh, I always wanted to be a professional footballer, and um, and uh, I got a break to go to Portugal. And um, at the time, I went to Portugal, all interested in football. I'm not thinking of all the other aspects that comes along with moving to, to a foreign, foreign country. country. And um, and I got there, and I realized that I had to trust uh, a lot of people who who I didn't know very well would make in real important life decisions for me. So I was actually forced to, uh, to learn the language in that sense. And I'm, I'm happy that I did. You know, I can particularly remember um, I was sitting having dinner with my agent and the president of a football club. Um, and they were negotiating on my behalf. And I really didn't, didn't understand <laughs> absolutely anything they were saying. Um, and at that point, I realized that, you know, um, if I stay here for two or three years, um, then I have to have to learn have language to learn by language. then. Yeah. So, is it that you landed, right, without having any kind of prep in the language? You didn't, you really were so focused Blank. on the excitement of the break. Yes, and the, yeah. So, I was, you were learning basically like a baby. Yeah, yeah. I was completely blind in, in terms of the language when I went there. Um, and it's funny because I, I went to Tranquility as well and my form teacher was French. But at the time coming up here thinking, I mean, I'm living in Trinidad or well, why do why I need French yeah. or, mm -hmm. or Spanish or whatever. So Especially I really wasn't to, to do a football player yes, yes. In, in a foreign place. And, and to be a football player, really, um, if you want to do well back in the day, then you really had to go to Europe. I think a lot of players have, have the option now with North America. So we actually exporting a lot of players to there. Um, but back in the day it was, was Portugal, Spain, uh, Europe, uh, Holland, uh, England, these kind of places. Uh, England you speak English, but uh, Europe is what I mean. So, and um, even if you play in, in the UK, you have teammates. Yeah. from Europe Th there is a massive influx of foreign players now and I, I think the English league is is one of the best leagues uh, not because of the, the locally grown players but basically because of the foreign players who went into the English Premier League and they, they, they brought their some some of the good uh, nutritional habits with them right. and now the English players are picking it up and they, they're really good at it and that has lifted the game there so tell me when you landed in Portugal, how old were you? Um, approximately 19 years old. So you were just about 19, a somewhere. A young around. adult. Yeah. Different country, no language skills, and basically you were there for about two or three years. Well, well I, I actually played in Portugal for eight years okay. altogether. Um, so I, I was fortunate in that uh, the team that I eventually signed my first contract with a team called Academica de Coimbra mm -hmm. uh, and Coimbra is a university, university city and it's one of the oldest university cities in Europe. Mm -hmm. So um, the history of the club that I played for before was most of the students back in the 60s and 70s played for the club they and would... you had to be a student to play for the right. club. Um, but over the years uh, that diluted a bit and there's still a, a lot of students there but because football is so competitive in the professional yeah. world now that they actually needed to bring in other players to, to remain competitive. So I landed in this uh, city. Um, a university town. University town, right. which was really good for me, which helped in my process of learning because when I first went, I had a tutor who was teaching me uh, Portuguese. Uh, unfortunately, the, the Portuguese that you learn from tutors is, is, is like using um, the right verbs and so forth. Um, uh, let's say the Queen's Portuguese, yes. really. 
which is we don't really use any streets. <laughs> so when you're speaking to your teammates like that, they kind of go, what is yes. he talking about, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so you know, had to learn both. You had to learn how to speak formally. Yes. And how to speak informally for the setting, for the sports setting. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But but what actually happened was uh, uh, learning to speak formally wasn't really working because it was spending too many hours trying to do it. And it was just easier living and working with my teammates. And because a lot of them were students, they were able to translate a lot of things for me. And, um, and that made life easier. You know, I, I kind of joke around with, with a lot of people and say I kind of learned Portuguese kind of hanging out at night <laughs> because uh, by nature I'm, I'm a shy person. So what actually happened is like during the day with my teammates and that sort of stuff, um, they would ask me to say things and because I know they would laugh at me, I wouldn't say it, oh, you know? Yeah. And then you would go out uh, after a game and you'd have a couple of uh, beers or whatever and then you know you would lose setting. all your, yeah. <laughs> you know all, you all the inhibitions yes. and all the embarrassment and they would ask you to say things and it was said three or four times and they would laugh and then the fifth time you would get it, right. it right and then uh, you say okay well that's the way to say it and that's the way to do it so i kind of actually learned portuguese to say the difficult words and the difficult phrases hanging around with my uh, my teammates uh, that's an important point because a lot of people are intimidated by learning mm -hmm. a new language. You're afraid of being wrong, of mm -hmm. sounding silly, you know, and you, you discuss the need to get over that, yeah. you know. So that, yeah. I mean, aside from that challenge of your, your own personality of being shy, did, did you have any other major challenges with, with, with um, picking up the language? Yeah, a major challenge for me was the pronunciation, you know, and I, I can give you a few examples. Uh, it is really difficult when, you, when you're older to, to pick up the pronunciation. I mean, in Portuguese, you, you use your tongue and the, the way you breathe a lot. Um, one of the words that was really difficult for me to pick up, um, I, I think was the, the, the last word that I actually learned in Portuguese um, at the time was frigorifico. <laughs> and it's such a difficult word for somebody who doesn't speak a different language. To but learn. I have to ask, what does it mean? Refrigerator. <laughs> And that's a word you'd have to use every day. And then it's a word that you actually use every day. I mean, if you wanted to get a cool drink or you want ice or something, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was challenging. And that is the word that I actually learned uh, with my friends uh, having a beer too, because uh, it, it was kind of a social thing amongst everybody. They would go to everybody, hear him say this, and then they would say, say it. And then I would say it in all sorts of ways. And eventually, after like maybe my second or third beer, the tongue would start to work right, and then uh, and then then I got it, and and then it's stuck in here now. Now it's something that I wouldn't ever forget. Now you you, you kind of preempted me because I was going to ask you if there was any really memorable moment um, in your immersion mm -hmm. in learning that mm -hmm. that's something that stands out for you. I mean, I mean, there's there's a lot of things really, you know, I can particularly remember one day, um, it was pre-season training and, um, and what would normally happen, we would train in the morning, we would go away and have lunch and then we would, uh, we would come back to training. So I remember one of my teammates, uh, he said to me, um, he said, fish? And I kind of said to him, um, no, I didn't have fish, I had chicken. <laughs> And all the boys started to laugh. And it is pronounced fish, like F-I-X-E. Ah. And what it actually means is, are you okay? Oh, okay, okay <laughs> right? Okay. So he was saying to me, fish. And I was kind of going, no, I had chicken for lunch. I didn't have fish, you know. And so, you know, there's things like that yeah. that happen that you kind of, it's stuck in your memory because then you're so embarrassed at, yeah. at the time. And you then you're going, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You know, um, this is such a wonderful story because, as you said, in school, mm -hmm. you said to yourself, I am interested in sports. There's no real purpose for me to focus on the languages. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of students don't realize how many doors can open to them when yeah. they do. Yes. All right. When they have that benefit of an, another language or mm -hmm. two or three. Yeah. Um, 
What advice would you give to students or potential language learners about? No, I, I, I mean, if if I uh, I look at my own personal experience, you know, I, I left there at, uh, at 19 years old to go to Portugal, uh, uh, roughly, and um, and then if if I look back uh, uh, 30 years back now and and the opportunities that has opened up for me, um, Portuguese is a Latin language and um, I understand Spanish. Mm. Um, I understand Italian. Yeah. Uh, when we travel, we don't really need a translator because I I can do things okay. with the team, you know. Yeah. And it, it's just it's just a wonderful uh, opportunity learning a different language. I mean, when I travel to other places, I can just enjoy the place so much more because you I have a better worry, understanding yeah. of uh, of the culture. One because once you're learning a language, it, it teaches you the culture yeah. as well. You know, and um, it's, it's, it makes traveling more pleasurable. You feel altogether. more independent. Yes. And you would, yes. you would advise, I'm sure, those who are interested in sports uh -huh. of the benefit of learning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I say to, to most of the young players, um, you know, um, if you have the opportunity, you never know what direction life is going to take you. Learn as much as you can. Yeah make use of your time the best as they can you know um, and 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 uh, I'm saying that to, to the young players you know they're always with their phones and their tablets and, and sometimes you say to them just take a half hour sometimes to just broaden your minds and, and learn something different because I, I can guarantee them because it happened in my life that somewhere down the road you would see the benefits of uh, of yeah yep. of learning another language well, thank you so very much. We are so pleased to have your story yeah. in our language history. <laughs> thank you very much for having me.